Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our presentation is entitled, Zone of Decision. It's the story of Lieutenant Danny O'Brien, who did everything the hard way, including becoming a hero. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Daring in imagination, courage in science, these have propelled us straight into the jet age, the age of airspeed faster than sound, of flight into the farthest frontiers of the sky. How would you, young man, like to master one of those jet planes? They're considered safer to fly than the old propeller type. If you qualify for and successfully complete the interesting exacting training of an aviation cadet, you'll have your chance. Visit your nearest United States Air Force base or your local United States Air Force recruiting station to find out how you can become an aviation cadet. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Zone of Decision. Hiya, Bill. Hi, Pete. Oh, what's new, huh? What's new? You should be asking me. Look, man, I've been away three days, remember? Well, Rambowski's on the new promotion list. No kidding. He made captain, huh? Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah, of course you'll be losing a co-pilot now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Hey, you guys been flying together a long time now. Sure have. Going on three years. Why, we were rotated back here to Well Centro together from Yokota. Well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. So who's coming in? Who's going to take his place? I saw some orders yesterday for his second lieutenant, Daniel Joseph O'Brien. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Straight from cadet school, still clutching a dollar bill in his hand and waiting for his first salute. Well, this is true. At least the straight from cadet school part of it. So help me. Why do these things have to happen to me? Ah, don't be so bitter, chum. Even you were second lieutenant once. Oh, brother. I'd rather not be reminded. We had some times, though, didn't we? I made some mistakes, huh? Ah, <laughs> now. <laughs> well, better get on home, I guess. You gonna be at the club Saturday night? Yeah, I'll try to. You can give me a full report on Senor O'Brien. He's coming in tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. You know who it is? Second Lieutenant. Never saw him before. Thanks. Hello, Lieutenant. Looking for me? Now, would the intrepid Danny O'Brien be staggering out of the sack at 5.30 of a morning if I wasn't? What did you say? Oh, and what a dump. Goonie birds and boxcars. Me, potentially the hottest jet jockey in the Air Force, and what happens? They send me to this testing joint. You've been in to see the colonel yet? Have I? Wow. What do you mean, wow? I hope you didn't start off by telling him this was a dump. Well, to be perfectly frank, I made a few ill-considered comments on the subject. You know, that man's got no sense of humor. Yeah. All right, come with me. Guess I better take you for a walk around, get you zeroed in. Okay, okay, anything you say. Over there, you see the drying tower. That's where the parachutes used for overwater drops are dried before being repacked, see? Mm-hmm. We've got a pretty big operation here. Our mission is simply to test parachutes, but that involves a lot of different things. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> now, there's the instrumentation lab. 
That's where the highly complicated equipment sent aloft to measure the performance of new parachutes are housed. Now, we've got a whirl tower, fabric shop, a wind tunnel, textile lab. Uh, we develop new fabrics here, too, and test some created for us by contractors. Uh, machine shop, of course, metal shop, a photo lab. Oh, stop, stop already. You're confusing me. You mean it takes all that just to turn out a parachute? You've got a lot to learn, boy, a lot to learn. Now, we do develop and test personnel chutes naturally, but the majority of our work is with cargo drops, see? Eh? We can drop an 18,000-pound bulldozer in one of our 200-footers. In fact, the old man says, give us an airplane big enough and we can drop anything we can extract from the plane. Yeah? Yeah. All right, come on. We'll head back toward the office. Show you some of the figures on a few of our past experiments. Now, we got a program underway testing escape pods from high-altitude aircraft. Uh, ejection capsules, you mean? That's right. We're having some troubles with them now, but that'll all be worked out. Hey, I've got a question. Yeah? What? What's the idea of reporting the work at 6 a.m.? Is that the only thing you want to know? Well, it's very, very important, especially to a man who likes his sleep. We take advantage of the cooler hours. Since it gets to be 120 in the shade in the afternoons, we've got to knock off about 2.30. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it answers it. But I'm not going to like it. Something tells me there's a lot of things around here you're not going to like. And vice versa. Is this the tabulation control? Uh... <whistles> Hello, gorgeous. Can I do something for you, Lieutenant? Oh, but definitely. Were you looking for someone? Just you, Miss Susan Stewart. And God bless the Pentagon. For what? Putting nameplates on the desk. I'm afraid I'm quite busy, Lieutenant. And if you don't want anything in here, the door is just behind you. Oh, but that's no door. That's the portal to heaven. And you're one of the angels. I see. I know, I... I know, I know. You're quite busy. Okay, Miss Susan, regretfully, I must admit, I came to get some tabulation data from Major Tompkins. Right through that door there. Thank you. But uh, you haven't seen the last of me. That's what I was afraid of. Well, Bill, I see you made it. Must have found a sitter, huh? Yeah, right. Nice night, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Is it? What's the matter with you? Say, I never got a chance to ask you about your new boy. No. Oh, it can't be as bad as that. It's worse. What's the matter? Oh, that guy. He rubs me the wrong way. And everyone else, too, even the old man. Oh, what's wrong with him? What's wrong? He's got a talent. He's got a positive genius for alienating people. Hey, look, there he is now. See him? Out there on the dance floor. Uh, give him credit. Look who he's dancing with. Susan Stewart. Holy smoke. Every bachelor officer on the base is after her. You gotta hand it to you, Danny boy. If I will get you ten, the intrepid Lieutenant O'Brien hasn't found out that Miss Susan Stewart is the old man's darling daughter. And the old man hasn't had a chance to put in the old black ball. Well, don't be so bitter. He may be a good boy underneath it all. Wait and see. All right, now we're over the drop ground. You've got to keep her absolutely steady. We don't try to simulate unusual conditions in these initial test drops because they might interfere with the operation of the instruments. I'll take over now. Oh, I'm okay. You can observe. I can do it. I said I'll take over. Okay, okay. These water drops can be tricky sometimes. All right, I'll take over for the drop run. But I'm all right. I know, I know. Take it easy, will you? I'll bring her in. We're gonna drop on the next approach. I I'll... know, I know. You'll take over. Yeah. For crying out loud, I might as well be an autopilot for all the flying I do. 
We've got to have 20,000 feet, unlimited visibility, and no more in a three-knot wind, and be on the way home before I can fly this hunk of junk. Now, listen, that guy back there is making his 404th jump today, and I'm sure not going to have anything happen that would make it his last, even to massage the ego of a would-be hotshot like you. Nuts! Now, look, you. Teamwork is the basic rule of the Air Force. I wouldn't be any good without the chief back there. We depend on the weather wing the AACS people, our maintenance crews, and a lot of other guys to keep our planes in the air. If you can't see that, you shouldn't be in the Air Force. Good morning, Colonel Stewart. Oh, good morning, Bill. Sit down. I understand you wanted to see me. Yes, sir. It's with regard to Lieutenant O'Brien. What about him? I'd like to have him assigned to my crew. Uh, Pete Nelson is willing, and Eddie Edwards, who's flying with me now, can go with Pete. And what's this all about, anyhow? Well, sir, to be frank, uh, Pete and Lieutenant O'Brien just don't seem to get along. That's not surprising. Uh, well, sir, I, I don't think you can uh, discount Danny O'Brien that quickly. I've, uh, I've checked his records, and he graduated in the top third of his class. He's just gotten off to a bad start here, and I think with a little different handling, he'll be okay. Well, I'm inclined to disagree with you. I can tell you he didn't make much of an impression on me. Uh, how about Susan, sir? Mm. All right. I'll approve the change. Thank you, sir. I don't think you'll regret it. No, I won't regret it, but you might. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. This is the intrepid Lieutenant O'Brien. I'm busy. Oh, doubtless. And what are you busy at? I'm reading a book. A book? You ought to try it sometime. Well, very nice of you to take an interest in my improvement. Now, let me see. Put on that pink kind of fluffy thing I saw you in in the hall yesterday and comb out your beautiful brown hair and I'll be over in ten minutes. I don't think you heard me. I said I'm reading a book. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll come out and read over your shoulder. That'll be fun. You'll do nothing of the kind. It only put Daddy into a temper, and I'm trying to get an advance on some money for a new coat. Look, I've got something to tell you. Tell me over the phone, then. Oh, very well. In recognition of my great efforts for the last three months, and in appreciation for my unqualified talents as an aviator... Yes. Yes, go on. I am being reassigned from my present place as Yes Man and General Factotum to Pete Nelson. Oh, Danny, where are you going? Ah, you will miss me. No. Then I won't go. Well, I, I'm not going to hang on this phone all night. Okay, okay, but don't you worry your pretty little head. I'm staying right here on the base. I'm going to fly with Bill Carter. Poor Bill. Sometimes I think maybe someone around here appreciates me, even if you don't, yet. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Zone of Decision. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, if you're a high school graduate, are unmarried and otherwise qualified, there's a big future for you as an aviation cadet in the United States Air Force. You'll receive a year of the world's finest flying training. Then you'll graduate as a second lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime to serve your country and build a career that will fit you for responsible positions in both military and commercial aviation. Be sure to visit your nearest Air Force base or your nearest United States Air Force recruiting station to find out how you can join the United States Air Force as an aviation cadet. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Zone of Decision. That was nice going, Lieutenant. Even for Danny O'Brien. Well, thank you, Captain. It's sure different with you than with Pete. Well, Pete's a great guy. It's too bad you didn't hit it off with him. Yeah, maybe I had something to do with that. It could be, Danny. It could be. 
Say, how are you making out with uh, Susan Stewart? <laughs> Getting no place but fast. What's the matter, competition? No, among other things. You know, her old man, he, he just doesn't take to me. No, no, I guess not. If I could only do something, something sensational, to get him on my side. Well, maybe you will, kid. Well, I'm going to check into the ops office. I'll see you tomorrow. The big day, you know. Final check on those med kits. Right. Pretty cheerful, Daniel, for this hour of the day. Oh, getting used to these hours, I guess. How you feel, all set? Uh, look, clue me in, will you, Captain? Most of these preliminary tests were made before I got here. I know this is the final, but that's about all. Well, this shoot we're going to try out today is a beaut. If she proves up, it'll not only be an asset to the military, but to civilians as well. You know that it's for medical supplies? Yeah, but what's so special about dropping first aid stuff when we drop bulldozers and fire trucks as SOP? Well, in the first place, it isn't ordinary first aid stuff. Now, this is plasma and antibiotics and such things. Delicate things that must be packed with extreme care because they're breakable and then dropped like they were landing on a down pillow. Sounds pretty good. Well, today is going to prove it. Up to now, we've been using dummy stuff, but today we're dropping the real thing over in the foothills so we can get a rough terrain instead of, as we usually do right here on the desert. Well, what's in the kits? Plasma and stuff like that? No, no, they've been worked out by the medics to include everything that'd be needed at the front lines or by a unit which might be temporarily cut off from its source of supplies to handle almost any kind of injury short of one requiring operating room facilities. Well, uh, you all ready, kid? I sure am. Let's go. Getting pretty close to the drop spot. Better call in our position, see if the ground party's ready for us. Roger. Egghead 181, calling Hoppy. Come in, Hoppy. Egghead 181, calling Hoppy on A for Abel. Can you read me, Hoppy? Over. Read you five square. Over. Roger. Go ahead, Egghead 181. Egghead 181, approaching drop zone. Over. Roger. Stand by one. Stand by for change of orders. Stand by for change of orders. Roger. Huh. Wonder what that's about. I can't imagine. Maybe something's wrong down below. Hoppy to Egghead 181. Mayday signal received. Commercial passenger. Repeat. Commercial passenger. Exact position not yet received. Colonel says to proceed heading 285 degrees at once. If you find anything, drop everything you have aboard if necessary. We'll give you the exact position as soon as it comes in. Confirm, please. Gotcha, Hoppy. Give us the info and type of aircraft as soon as you can, huh? Wilco, out. That's bad. It's a commercial passenger plane down. Yeah, what a break, though, that we've got all these medical supplies aboard and we're the nearest to them. Yeah, if we can find them. Oh, we'll find them. Right. Keep your eyes glued to the deck now. <laughs> You know, Captain, it's a funny thing about the Air Force. People think we're just here to defend the country against outside attack. And actually, in a way, that's just a small part of what we do in times of peace. Our weather planes gather data for weather forecasters all over the country. And the first one they call on in any disaster, like a flood or earthquake, is the Air Force. Airlifting emergency supplies. Well, a few years back, we're even dropping hay to starving snowbound cattle. Operation Haylet, that was. Yeah. Now, here we are looking for a crashed civilian plane. It's only a few planes and a few men this minute. But if we find anything, the entire resources of this area will be thrown into action, if there's even the slightest chance of saving lives. That's right. Uh, I'm beginning to see what you and Pete mean by playing as a team. I knew I was right. Hmm? About what, Bill? Oh, nothing, nothing. Hey, Bill. Hey, I think I just spotted something. Here, wait. Let me take over so you can look. Now, over there. See those big pines? There are two men waving. Give me the binoculars. Yeah. Watch these updrafts. Kind of bumpy going. Roger. Crying out loud. You see it? I'll call in. Egghead 181 calling Hoppy. Joy Hoppy, over. You want the crew chief to take a look, too? I'm on, sir. Case it for an airdrop. Right, sir. 
he didn't acknowledge us. It's funny. I better repeat. Egghead, 181, calling Hoppy on A for Abel. Channel Joy, at least two survivors, over. Sir, it looks like there may be some more survivors, but injured. See those brown strips there next to the fuselage? Looks to me like litter's laid out. You may be right, Chief. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are. Shall I make another pass? Hold it. Hoppy, you read me. Do you read me, Hoppy? Hoppy, one, one, I cannot read you. I cannot read you. You're coming from Garbo. Oh, what a time to lose radio contact. Yeah. Come in on Abel. Come in. Well, that's that. I guess we're on our own. You can make that pass now, kid. Roger. Okay. I'll keep her nice and even if you can. We got these blasted updrafts here. Yeah, I'll try. Chief. All okay, sir. I've got the stuff ready to go. Three up, sir. Roger. Can you see him? Yeah, there they go. Now, that one's a goner. Wind's taking it clear down the valley. Ah, oh, it's blasted air currents. There goes another. Nuts. Third one's in a tree. It's a big tree. Nuts. Oh, try another pass. Maybe I can get down closer to the deck. If you get down any closer and you were chum, you'll have one of those trees wrapped around your neck. By the way, did I say, nice going. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Come on, once more, we get the brass ring. Hang on to your hat. Here we go. McCann? Right, sir. Already here. Three more off, sir. Roger. How's it look? Uh, one's dead. Oh. Heading for the other side of the valley. It's going to be mighty cold up here tonight. Well, they probably have blankets in the ship and some food, anyhow. Yeah. Second was treed. The most important thing is the medical supplies. Yeah. Blasted. That last was hung up, too. If you could only get Hoppy, they could send in a chopper. Maybe, but I don't think they could make it before the weather breaks. It'd clobber for sure. Egghead 181 calling Hoppy. Egghead 181 calling Hoppy. This is Hoppy. I cannot read you. Cannot reach your position. Nuts. I see those two guys again. Looks like they have some white strips of cloth. They're trying to spell something out on the ground. Yeah, I can't make it out. Yeah, yeah, I can. It's SOS. Yeah, they must have some engine. I guess the sergeant was right. Yeah. Hey, McCann. Yes, sir. How many more packages we have? One, sir. Look, I have an idea. Shoot, we can try anything. Well, those med kits weigh about 100 pounds. Yeah, just about. And I only weigh another 135. I strap the box to my own chute harness and guide me and the box down together. Neat, huh? Negative. Well, it's the only way. No, absolutely no. The old man said take no chance. He said to exercise caution, and that's different. He also gave us permission to drop anything aboard. No. Look, how would you feel if you were one of those injured down there and you saw us wiggle our wings and take off back for the base and with the storm coming up? Look, it'd take two days for a ground party to reach them. And choppers are out in this weather. It's ridiculous. The first place you'd never jump before. Yeah, but I watched the guy once in a movie. Second, there's no guarantee it'll work. You can't miss your forgetting this is Danny O'Brien. Third, if anyone goes, it'll be me. Oh, you, my good fellow, weigh well over 200 pounds. You and the box together, supported by one chute, would go plummeting down to earth like the well-known crowbar. Whereas I'm much... Uh, okay. My hat's off to you. But if you break your doggone fool neck, remember, I'm the guy who's got to explain it. Be sure that's fast and tight now, huh? Sir, that's just it. You don't want it fast and tight. Oh? 
Why not? Now, this here's a half hitch. When you get about 15 feet from the ground, you pull that and get rid of the box. Otherwise, you'll land off balance and maybe break something. Something of yours, I mean, not the box. Oh, I see. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. That's okay, sir. Good luck. You can tell the captain to make the run now. We're all set back here, sir. Roger. Hey, listen. Tell my screwball friend happy landings. Roger, sir. Hey. Breezy, isn't it? Well, I always had a longing to do this anyway. Just for the fun of hollering... Uh, <laughs> hey, what is it they holler? Geronimo, sir. Oh, yeah, that's it. Well, Geronimo! McCann, how's he doing? He's headed straight for the mountain and those trees. Now he's recovered. He's gonna make it, sir. He, he's okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> the intrepid Danny O'Brien. received tonight from the foot party sent to bring out the 22 survivors of the commercial aircraft crash on Tuesday that all were in fair shape. Hero of the disaster, according to the latest reports, was Air Force Lieutenant Daniel O'Brien of Oak Park, Illinois, who parachuted into the scene of the crash bringing medical supplies. Dr. J.B. Van Horn, who accompanied the Rangers into the scene, was quoted as saying, there are at least three of the injured who are alive at this moment as a result of Lieutenant O'Brien's action. Stock market reports... See, Daddy, I told you Danny was wonderful. Mm -mm. A highly irregular performance. But I've done a few irregular things in my career. Besides, it was a perfect test of that new equipment. I got word from the ground party that every box, even the ones which were treed, landed absolutely intact. Wonderful. Mind now, I'm not saying it's the thing to do, but... No, oh, here, O'Brien. How about another helping of turkey? Thank you, sir. Don't mind if I do. Man, there's no thrill in the world like flying a jet plane. And you can become an Air Force aviation cadet. You'll be flying jets easily and safely within 18 months. Aviation cadet training is rough and rigorous, but the rewards are worth it. You graduate as an Air Force lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Guarantee your future as an aviation cadet. See your nearest United States Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>